Okay, so good, good evening everyone. I want to dedicate this class for Ilui Neshama, Mira Bat Berta, Ruach Hashem Tenachena Began Eden. And Bezat Hashem also for the recovery of all the sick people all over the world, especially the Jewish nation, the Yiratzon HaKadosh Baruch Hu, would uh, give refuah shlema to everyone. Today, um, again, we are doing a live class because of the situation and Pesach is coming next week and I decided to speak about Pesach but not in a regular perspective because there's a lot of laws for Passover for Pesach we're not gonna speak about uh, the details of the laws we're gonna speak about the meaning of those laws we're gonna speak about the meaning of Passover the Kabbalistic meaning of it why do we do that? What's so special about this time? What's so special about Passover, about Pesach, Leila Seder, that night that we call Leila Seder, the night of Passover, which is a very special night, very interesting night. What's the secret of that night? Why do we do all those different things? Eating the matzah, what's the matzah symbolize? Eating the maro, yeah, the lettuce, and washing the hands few times, singing all those songs. There's a lot of things that we do, and we have to understand a little bit the deepness of it. Of course, we're not going to have enough time to go over everything, but I think we're going to get some big secrets uh, about this uh, holiday, about Pesach, about Lela Seder. And if we're going to take this information and apply it this year, I'm sure that each one of us will have a different Pesach, because... I can clearly say that Leila Seder, the night of Passover, that's the highest night during the year, and it's the most important night in the year. That's what our uh, rabbis says, say um, in a lot of books that the night of Pesach, it's the most special night. It's called Lel Shimurim. It's a night of protection. Protection from what? Not from physical problems protection from spiritual problems that each one of us has shalom may have during the year the day of Passover has a power <clears throat> to protect us the whole year and that's what it says in um, one of the great books Kava Yashar he says that if people would know what's the power of Leila Seder they would prepare themselves a way before to that special night of Leila Seder because what's happening there and today we're gonna explain a little bit of what's happening in Leila Seder what's happening in that night it's so high it's so spiritual and it affects the whole year especially our soul so just to summarize uh, in general just to understand what's happening at that night it says in the holy books that the night of Leila Seder the night of Pesach that's a night that we get a new soul, a new uh, neshama. Neshama, it's called soul and in Hebrew. We get the new neshama. And why do we need the new neshama? So I thought today we can, um, we can describe it like computers. You know, the, I think a few days ago, my phone told me that it needs to update the software. The software was very old. It's not a very new phone. And it told me that, listen, you can't stay with this phone in anymore. You have to update the software. And it just did it by itself. Now is the date that you have to, to update the software. Same thing is every computer that we have. The computer has a window. And uh, Windows have to update. You cannot stay with the old one. Same thing happening to our soul every year. Every year, the birthday of the soul is Pesach. And it says in the Gemara, Masechet Rosh Hashanah, it says there that there is an argument between two big rabbis. What's the time that Adam Arishon, that the first person in the universe, uh, was created? One of them says he was created in the month of Nisan. And the other one says was created in the month of Tishrei. So, who is right? Yeah, how can you argue about something like that? 
It's either he was created in the month of Nisan or he was created in the month of Tishrei. But we know in the Torah we says Elu ve'elu divrei Elokim Chaim. Both of them are right. So how come both of them can be right? He, he was born only one time. So Arizal explained the the reality is that they are both right. And Rabbi Eliezer that says that he was born on Tishrei, he talks about the body. The body was, was created on Tishrei, on the month of Tishrei. But the soul of Adam Arishon, that person that we all came from, we are all sparks of Adam Arishon, we are a part of his soul. The soul was created six months before that. It was created on Nisan, on Pesach. And that's why the creation of the soul is the Leila Seder, is the night of Pesach. This is a very special night. And that's why... We have to take advantage of this night to know what to do because this is a reprogramming of the system and especially of our mind. And why I'm saying mind? Because the soul has three parts. Nefesh, Ruach, Neshama. Nefesh is located in the liver. Ruach is located in the heart. And the highest uh, in the body, the highest level of soul is called Neshama, is in the brain. The brain, the Neshama, we get on Pesach. We get every year a new neshama, a reprogram of our brain. It's called in the Kabbalah, Muhin. Muhin is the brain, the new brain. <clears throat> and that's why uh, we will see on Lela Seder, a lot of, we're going to see the number four is playing a big role in Lela Seder. For example, we have four cups of wine that each of one, each one of us has to drink. And those four cups of wine are so important that it says in the Gemara that if a person is poor, he doesn't have money, he has to go knock on doors and ask for wine for Pesach. For other things, he doesn't have to ask because uh, we're not going to tell someone to embarrass himself for, 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 uh, for all mitzvot, for every mitzvah. But for wine for Pesach, he has to knock on the doors of other people and beg them, please give me wine for Pesach. Wine is so important. Why? Because wine, when we drink the first cup of wine, according to Kabbalah, we get muhin de gadlut. We get the reprogramming of our soul. We get the first part. And we have four parts to the soul. And that's why we have four parts for the brain. We have in the brain chokhmah, that's the right brain. We have Bina, that's the left side of the brain, and we have Da'at. Da'at is the, is, is the other side, which is in, in, behind that, but the Da'at has split to two. It's split to, in, in Kabbalah, it's called uh, Israel Saba Vetvuna. It's Chesed of the Da'at and the Gvura, and the judgment, the kindness of the Da'at and the judgment of the Da'at. So there's four types of brain. And that's why we have in the tefillin, tefillin that we put in the head, we have four different, uh, right? We have four, it's split to four, the tefillin. Why? Because every day, it's a different type of, a, a different kind of reprogramming every day that we need to do when we go to sleep and we come back. So we, we reprogram the, the system a little bit. But on Pesach, we get it for the whole year. And that's the four cups of wine that we drink. That's why they're so important. <clears throat> And we even have to do anything just to have those four cups of wine. So on Pesach, we get a new brain. We get a new soul. Why is this so important? Because all the spiritual levels that we're going to reach during the year are depend on Pesach. On Rosh Hashanah, this holiday, the New Year's, the Jewish New Year's, Rosh Hashanah, all the things that we do on Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah will influence, will affect the physical year. How much money you're going to have, how much, uh, <clears throat> if you're going to be healthy or not. This is all written, what's going to be in your family. Those things are written, the material things, written on Rosh Hashanah in the books of heaven. But on Pesach, on Pesach, you affect your year spiritually. What's going to be your spiritual level? What's going to be the program of your mind, the perspective of everything? That is decided on Pesach. And that's why I think Pesach is more important than Rosh Hashanah in, 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 this, in this way. Because what's more important, the soul or the body? The soul, of course, is more important. And that's why Pesach, it's, our Rabbanim, our Chachamim says that's the most important uh, most important day or night during the year because spirituality is more important than any any other physical things so as we said we have uh, we have 
Rosh Hashanah, which is more physical, and uh, Pesach, which is more spiritual. On Pesach, we get the Mochin, we get the program. We get the new soul for the year. Why is that so important? As we know today, more than other years during the history, today the world, even the non-Jews, everybody know that the most important part in the body is the brain. The brain decides everything. If you have a good brain, you can basically even, uh, uh, you can be successful, you can make money, you can be healthy. Yeah, people that study the neurology of the brain, yeah, NLP, uh, hypnosis, all those things, they deal with the brain. Today they know what our Chachamim Kabbalah said a long time ago, that you can basically heal any pain just using your brain. I, I just did it yesterday. I had someone uh, with, a, with a back pain. He had a very, very like bad back pain. And he told me that he can't read of it like more than 10, 15 years. So I just told him, okay, close your eyes, do something with your brain. I told him what to think, what to do. And in two minutes, all the pain went away. Now he was shocked for like half an hour. How come? Like people do massages and things. How come the pain just gone? The reason it's gone because the pain is not in the back. The pain is in the, in the brain. When you change it in the brain, it's give commandments to the to the back to not to not to not have that pain and that's why every problem that we have in life is really the program of our brain if we have pesach properly everything will be good all our life will be good and that's why i think the whole year is depend on one day which is leila seder which is the night of pesach and the reason i talk so much about that is because we have to understand how important is that day and to prepare ourselves. Bezat Hashem, today, as much as time as we have, I have like information to speak maybe a maybe few days about Pesach. There's so many things, but we'll try to summarize that to the most important things that we should know when we're doing the Seder of Pesach. So first of all, <coughs> what is Pesach all about? What's Passover all about? We have that chametz thing. Chametz is the bread. Yeah, we have to get rid, get rid of the bread. I remember, I think a few years ago, um, I decided to do a Rosh Hashanah in my house, and we had a, a not Rosh Hashanah, sorry, a Pesach, Passover, in my house, and we had a cleaning lady because there were there were a lot of people, and we, we wanted a, a lady that to to help to wash the dishes and all the things, so we can feel more free, and and uh, do the set the uh, the proper way. And I looked at her eyes, I think that was the first time she sees such a thing. <laughs> a bunch of people sit in the table and they do so many weird things. Like for, for people that are not Jewish, we are very familiar with that. We do it every year. It's like, oh, it's normal. It's fine. But if we will look in a not Jewish perspective on what's happening in the Seder, this is super weird. This is like, there's no look like there's no uh, logic behind what we're doing. So first of all, we all sit together, we take a cup of wine, we make a blessing. <coughs> then we have a, a, we have a plate with like crackers on it, three crackers. And then we have one, uh, one piece of meat and then one egg. And then we have a lettuce and then we have like a charoset, which is something that is made from different things. We even don't know what. <laughs> and, and then we, we have different things on that plate nobody touches that plate it's not allowed to touch that plate to eat from that plate and then we take this plate we put it in the in the end of the table after that we bring it back and then we put it again in the end of the table and then we bring it back and then we cover it and then we discover it and then again we cover it and we discover it and and we do so many weird things we take a small celery we dip it in salty water and we eat and before that we have to wash our hands without saying a blessing we dip it and then after that we have so much food on the table but for an hour and a half or two hours we just don't touch nothing of it and we just say different stories and different things then we take wine with the finger one two three dumps for the different weird things 
And I looked at the eyes of that lady. She thought we are like crazy. Why don't you eat bread? What's all the thing with the crackers? Why matzot? What's the meaning of it? Why celery? Why maror? Why you take the three matzot and you break the middle of it? One, you have to hide. Then all the kids have to go and look for it. And then they get a prize if they look for it. This is really, really looks um, weird in, in their eyes. And if we will look inside ourselves, we will see that Bemet, this is, this is really something like, what, what's the meaning of it? Why do we have to hide the matzah? What's the purpose of hiding them? Why do we have to break it? Why the second one, not the first one, not the third one? What's the reason behind all of that? So, of course, before we're going to get into the reasons uh, a little bit, we have to know that even if we do it without understanding it, it still does the purpose of it. We still get the soul. Because all Leila Seder, all this time of the, the night of Pesach, we are accepting that soul, those mochin, those four types of program, the brain, the new brain that we get, we accept it through this Seder, through this night. And that's why we have to do different types of of things. <clears throat> now let's start with the chametz. The chametz is the chametz is uh, is bread basically. It's a bread. Now matzah is also a bread. They are both made from the same ingredients. Chametz is made from water and flour, and uh, matzah is made from water and flour. So what's the difference between them? Why, if you eat chametz on Pesach, that's such a big sin. It's like eating on Yom Kippur. Same, same level. Eating chametz on Pesach is like eating on Yom Kippur, which is not allowed. It's prohibited in the Torah, very clearly. And the matzah is made from the same ingredients. What's the logic behind it? So we know that the chametz, the difference between matzah and chametz is the timing. The time when we make... Uh, when we make bread, so we have the dough, which is made from water and, uh, and flour. And when we leave it for a while, more than 18 minutes, it rises. And if we're going to leave it for more time, we're going to rise even more. And our rabbi says that the chametz symbolize the, um, the ego. The chametz symbolizes the ego of the person. And if we're going to go even more deep, it symbolizes the will to get. There's two types of powers in the world. There's the, there's the will, the desire to give, ratzon latet, and there's the will to get, to, 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 to get for yourself. Yeah, What's the difference between a tzaddik and rasha, a righteous and a bad person? A righteous always want to give. That's the purpose of life, to be like Hashem. Hashem is always give, so we also give. We want to be like Him, that's how we connect with Him. But if a person always wants to get, give me, give me, give me, give me, this is called Rasha. Why? Because Rasha, if we're going to break the word, Reish Shin Ein is Ratzon Shel Atzmo. Only His will. I want only for myself. I don't want for no, nobody else. The purpose is to be satisfied myself. And all the other people in the world come just to... To make me uh, to make me happy, this is Rasha. That's on Shalatzmo. The whole concept of Judaism comes to take out this will to to get and to be a giver. Pesach, <coughs> we have chametz, we have matzah. Chametz symbolizes Ratzon Shalatzmo, the will to get. Yeah, the ego. I'm here. I'm the main part in the creation and everything is created for me. So please, everybody has to serve me. Yeah, the animals have to serve me. The other human beings have to serve me. My wife or my husband have to serve me. Everybody has to be here for me. So I'm going to be happy. That's the Western world, by the way. We can see it clearly. Yeah, the world of business, the world of everything is just about how you can make yourself, your life better. This is called Ratzon Shel Atzmo. This is the source of bad, of Rasha. Giving, it's the opposite. This is Chametz. Chametz means the ego of the person, the Yetzer the bad forces, the bad powers of creation. Matzah is humble. 
the matzah doesn't rise, it's, it's a cracker. It's just very low. And it tells you the reason why we're here, it's not for ourselves. We came to serve others. We came to be like God. That's godliness. This is the matzah. Now, this is all nice. So this is symbolized that, this is symbolized this. But really, every action we do in this world affects the upper worlds. So the world is created in a way that everything that we do here affects the spiritual worlds. So for example, if I, let's say, do kindness here, I come and I give money to a poor family, I give them a certain amount of money. I gave them money, they enjoy that money. But I also, in the upper worlds, I gave money to the, I gave energy, blessing, power to the Shekhinah. I gave power to the world to exist. I gave something. Ratzon Latet, to give. So anything we do here, it affects the whole world. And then it comes back here. Same thing, it affects our soul. Because our soul is connected to the spiritual worlds. Our soul is affected by every action that we do here. Physical action. That's why there's certain times during the year that we have to do certain actions. For example, on Sukkot, we take the Rulav, the Etrog, and we shake it. Why do we shake it? We shake it because... This action in the physical world is doing another action in the spiritual world. We bring blessings to the world, to the heart. We built the heart. Sukkot basically is building our heart, the Ruach. Pesach is building our brain. So that's why Sukkot, we all take all those things to the heart. We bring Shefa, we bring energy to the heart. Pesach is Mokhin, is we're getting that for the brain. So all the things we do here in this world, are affecting the upper worlds. That's why we have all those details, the commandments that Hashem give us in the Torah, because every commandment is exactly what we have to do, so we bring that energy, and we fix all the worlds, the spiritual worlds, and therefore this Shefa, this energy, comes back to our soul and fix our soul. So I'll give you an example. We have a mitzvah in, in the Torah, It's called Biur Chametz. One night before Pesach, we have also a special night. That night, we're going to come home. You can't eat nothing before you start to search the Chametz. You have to light, light a candle with a plate and go and see that there's no Chametz, there's no bread, crumbs, whatever, anywhere in the house that you cleaned everything properly. That's what we do one night before Pesach. <coughs> That's an obligation. We have a certain blessing for that. And a lot of people come with a question and they, and they say, Listen, Rabbi, I know I cleaned properly. I just, you know, uh, you know, there's some people that they are so into that cleaning, especially now everybody is at home, so I'm sure everybody does the job. So, but, but uh, uh, they, he said, I, I cleaned, I cleaned properly, I'm okay. Why do I have to go and check and how the candle will help me? I mean, I prefer to use the regular light. It's, it's more bright than the candle. And that's a good question. The answers for that question is, this physical thing that we go and search for chametz, yeah, of course, the simple explanation, the pshat, is because we have to make sure that there's no chametz and maybe something you didn't see and that's right, that's definitely a reason. But there's a deeper reason, which is re more, 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 more accurate. That's, that's the real reason. The real reason is, when you go and you search for that chametz with that candle, you basically, this light is lighting and burning all those negative powers, all this chametz, all the ego, in your soul because everything we owe it's a part of our soul by the way that's why rich people they have a big soul that's why Rabbi Uda Nasi and Rabbi Akiva they were always giving respect to rich people even though 
they not the most righteous people. If they have money, it means their potential. This, the, your soul potential could be that they don't use that potential, but the potential that they have is big. Now, this, uh, when you have a lot of rooms in your house, it means you have a lot of rooms in your soul. Every place in your house is symbolize a place in your soul and symbolize a place in the upper worlds that is connected to your soul. When you go with the candle and you check in all those places, and the big rabbis, they used to check every corner. Some big admorim, they used to do it for hours. Why? Because when this candle lights that place, it's basically taking off all the ego, the emotional chametz, out of your soul at that moment for the whole year. And that's the real cleaning. The cleaning before, it's the physical cleaning. The real cleaning is happening one day before Pesach when you go with that candle and you light all the rooms of your soul and you bring lightness, you bring ratzon latet, the will to give, which is the will of Hashem. And you take out all the desire to take. Those desires that we have inside us, the time we have to get rid of them is on Pesach, the night before Pesach. And that's how we have to check every place and every corner. And the more you have the savlanut, yeah, the, the patience to check it, the more you clean yourself. And the year will be a lot more clean with no ego. And that depends on that day. That's why it's so important to do that. Because we fix ourselves and we fix the worlds that are connected to my soul, to my source of soul. That's the secret of, of this. By the way, there's a minhag, there's a custom to take uh, 10 pieces of chametz and put it all over the house. And this is not a must for those people that uh, someone called me, um, I think a few days ago, and told me, listen, Rabbi, I'm, uh, I live by myself. So if I'm going to put those 10 pieces, I, I know where I put them. <laughs> so what's the point of, of, of looking for them? Yeah, because usually your wife put it everywhere and you go and you find it. So it's like a, it's, it's like a nice game, you know, to see if I really check it properly. But um, I said to them, basically, it's not a must. But even if you live by yourself, put those 10, 10 pieces, even though you know that, that you know where are they. Because the deep reason why we put those, because there's 10 powers of Tuma, of impurity in the world. And those, those uh, pieces are symbolized, those 10 powers. Because there's 10 powers of purity, of Gdusha, 10 Sfirot, and there's 10 powers of impurity. Now we want to get rid of the, this power, this negative power, this ego, this Yetzirah. That's the time, that's the time of our creation. We were created, our spirituality was created at that time. That's the perfect time to destroy, not to destroy, to overcome the Yetzirah, the evil forces of ourself and, and, and in general, that's the time of Pesach. This for, th those evil forces, they are built from 10 pieces, from 10 powers. So those 10 powers symbolize them. We go, we put them all over, and when we take them and then we burn them, in this world we burn those pieces, but in our soul, those 10 powers of Tuma were burned. And now we're clean from that ego. And it's going to be easier for us to have that will to give all over the year. So that's why it's a good custom. By the way, according to Kabbalah, for those people that, that, those people that have some uh, fears or problems in life or any emotions, they want to get rid of them. There's a zgula to write on a piece of paper those emotions. For example, uh, someone has an anger. So write anger on a piece of paper. And if you have a fear from uh, the virus, so write this on the piece of paper. And if you have a fear from something else, write it in a piece of paper. And then on every piece you put, every piece of chametz that you put all over the house, uh, attach with this that piece of paper, of that emotion or that fear, of that problem that you want to get rid of. And when you collect all of them and you burn them, so have in mind that you're burning right now all those fears, all those emotions, all those things. And according to Kabbalah, that works. 
that really works and it overcomes those problems. So that's another thing uh, practical that we can do on uh, on the night before Pesach. Now, this is B'dikat Chametz. Uh, there's more things to talk about in B'dikat Chametz, but let's go to the actual night. Let's go to Leila Seder. <coughs> we said that Leila Seder is the night that we reprogram our mind, we get a new soul. And that's why at that night, first of all, we have to be in a mood, in a good mood, to get this soul. Because there's, in Kabbalah there's two things, two uh, moods that we are, we have during our life. One called Mukhin de Gadlut. Mukhin de Gadlut is when the brain is big. A big brain, and one called Mochin de Katnut, a small brain. What's Mochin de Gadut? What's Mochin de Katnut? So, just briefly to understand the, the general concept, Mochin de Gadlut, when you have a big brain, means everything goes well. For example, you know those times that you felt that when you pray, like it's really with intention, you feel the prayer. And everything goes good and, and, and like you, you wake up in the morning and you are successful in everything and everything that you talk, people listen to you and you see how the world is beautiful and that means you live in Mokhin de Gadlut, you live with the big brain. Your program right now, you have the full program. Mokhin de Katnut, this is the small brain, means nothing going like you want. Everything is like very super hard and you try to pray but uh, your your mind goes at uh, different places. You try to learn but you don't have the patience to learn. You try to do business but it doesn't go when the family doesn't go. This is means you live in Mokhin de Katnut. You live in a small brain. And we have it, we have those ups and downs all, all every year. Now where do we get the Mokhin de Gadlut? Where do we get that power of the big brain? On Pesach. Pesach, that's why if you uh, a little bit familiar with the prayers that we do, every year, every holiday, we have something called Halel. Halel, it's a praise that we praise to Hashem. And we never ever say the Halel at night. We always say it during the day. What's the Kabbalistic reason that we say those, uh, it's Psalms of Tehillim, it's Psalms of David, uh, but but they are very powerful. Why do we say this praise only during the day? Because in the day, it's a time of a big brain, of Mokhin de Gadlut. Usually in the day, you're more clear, you are, you're working. Night time symbolizes Mokhin de Gadlut, the small brain. Everything is like dark and doesn't go. That's why you cannot say this praise of Halel, which is symbolized Gadlut, Mokhin de Gadlut, the big brain, everything goes well. You cannot say it at night. It's not a time. There's only one night during the year that we say the Hallel at night. Only one night. That's the night of Pesach. The night of Pesach, why? Because the night of Pesach, the night becomes Gadlut, becomes day. Becomes a big brain. At that night, you get the big brain for the whole year. And the more you do that night properly, the more times of Gadlut, of big brain, you will have during the year. And that's why a lot of people, they are complaining... Rabbi, I don't understand why things are going so uh, slow, so bad. It doesn't go here, doesn't go here. Spiritually and physically also, but especially spiritually, very hard for people. I don't want to tell them, but the real reason why, it's because of your Pesach. <laughs> your Pesach <laughs> was not a Pesach. Because if your Pesach, your Lela said it was a good Pesach, your year, you're going to be more in Mokhin de Gadlut. You're going to have the big brain. And it all depends on, on that day, how we do that. And we will explain in a minute what's the procedure, what do we have to do, what's the most important things to do so we get that mochim, we get this brain, and we get this program uh, properly, we get our soul the right way. So this is what we do on Pesach. That's why we read Hallel at the night of Pesach. Then we come home. At home, we have the whole night. Now, very important, <clears throat> this night, because it's a super night, make sure you sleep before. Because there's a very special sgula and custom to do, to stay even all night, if you can, do so. 
and just learn as much as you can sing songs of of Torah for for sure yeah for uh, uh, as much as you can and and do holy things tell your kids about the Haggadah of Pesach כל המספר ב... ביציאת מצרים, כל המרבה לספר ביציאת מצרים, הרי זה משובח. The more you do it, the better is it. And we know all the big rabbis, they used to do it for the whole night. And it says in the holy books, at that night, you have to just fall asleep randomly. You don't put your pyjama and you say, okay, now I'm going to sleep. You have to just fall asleep through learning or through uh, reading Tehillim or something like that. That's the way you should go to sleep. Why? Because at that night, you get the mochin, you get this program, we have to make sure we get it the best we can. So we take advantage of that night to the, to the second, to the minute. We don't, we don't want to lose as much as we have power. So that's why a lot of people, what they do, they go to sleep on, on that day, during the day, before Pesach. Take a nap for one hour, two hours. Now you can, you can do even three hours. If you know that this is going to help you to stay awake or your kids, even more important. Because this day is so important for the, the kids because the kids get their, their souls also as well. It's very, very important for their um, education, the, the, those nights of Pesach. And that's why we put the main focus on the kids on Pesach. If you look at all the laws of Pesach, the kids are taking the main, um, the main focus. We're all talking about them, we explain them, they ask, they go, they find, they do everything. That's why you have to make sure they sleep at that, uh, that afternoon, so they're going to be awake um, even until 2 or 3 o'clock, if it's possible, during that special night. <clears throat> on Pesach, as I said, we drink four cups of wine. We said those four cups, it's um, the four types of brain that we have. When we drink the first cup, we already get the, this, this soul. We already get that. And the first cup, you already get the mochin. That's why right after that, what we do is eating the karpas. Karpas is basically a celery. It's a piece of celery. We have to eat only a little bit of it. We're not allowed to eat a lot of it because then we get to uh, different uh, discussions and problems. Just a little bit of it. And we dip it in salty water. Now, because we dip it in salty water, the law says that everything that you eat, uh, every, um, every vegetable or fruit that you eat and it's wet, you have to make netilat yadayim. You have to wash your hands before, but without saying a blessing. That's why we go and you, we wash and then we dip it. Now, what's the karpa symbolize? What's the celery come to symbolize? The celery is basically symbolized judgments. It symbolized the opposite of the mochin de gadlut, of the big brain. The big brain symbolizes chesed, kindness, a big, big power of kindness coming to me. But we cannot accept those lights that are coming on Pesach to us. We cannot accept the soul unless we have a vessel to accept it. It's like you want to drink water and I think something happened. Oh, yeah, you want to drink compet? Let's say you want to drink uh, water and then you don't have a cup to, um, to put the water on. So you can't drink the water because you need a vessel for that water to, to stay in the vessel. Same thing is with energy, with light. To us to expand except the light that we get on Pesach, we have to have a vessel. What's the vessel? The vessel is power of judgment. The power of judgment is the karpas, is the celery. That's why it's a little bit. We need a small vessel to get that light. And that's the energy of that celery that we take. We're not going to go into it too much, but that's the... Uh, the, the reason why we have to eat that vegetable before the meal, before we do everything else, that's very, very important. So we make, we wash our hands, we take it, we make the bracha of Bore Pri Adama, and we eat that celery. And again, we have to eat only a little bit because we don't need a lot of judgments right now, just a little bit to get the vessel, and then we can receive the light of Pesach. Right after that, <coughs> we have the... We have the matzot. What's the secret of the matzah? The matzah that we eat. So the matzah is very, very, very deep thing. In the Zohar, the matzah is called Michla de Asvata. 
a bread of a healthy bread, bread of, of, of health. And Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says that the, the matzah brings um, healing to the person, but not a, just a physical healing, because physically the matzah doesn't, it doesn't digest so good, but it's a spiritual emotional healing. The matzah basically heal all those negative places in our body. All those bad emotions, bad fears that comes from the ego, from the chametz, right? From the will to take and to not give. The matzah comes and brings that light of giving, taking out all the negative emotions, healing the person. So the son of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai asked him, Rabbi Elazar, he asked him, Abba, Father, if this is so important, the matzah has such a big power, why don't we eat matzah all year? <laughs> we should eat matzah all year if that's if that's the if this is a healing our emotions and the ego. So his father says that's a good question, but the reason we don't eat it the whole year is because we have a mission in this world. The mission is to live with with the uh, yetzerara. We have to live. We have to have those problems in life. We have to have those negativity in life. Yetzerara, evil inclination, and to overcome it. When do we get the power to overcome it? We have seven days of Pesach. We eat the matzah. We take the tablet. The yeah, the the pills. Sorry, we take the pills against the yetzerara for seven days, and it's enough because that's the source. That's the beginning of creation of the spiritual creation. You eat matzah for seven days, and it's good for you to overcome the chametz. Eating the chametz, you have to deal with the yetzerara, with the evil inclination the whole year. That's the mission of life. But you need powers for that. Where do you get those powers in the seven days of Pesach by eating matzah? And that's the energy of the matzah helps you to overcome it the whole year. That's why if you look at the, the big Kabbalists and the rabbis, when they have the matzah, when they get the matzah, they kiss it. They kiss it like, they kiss it, they keep it in, you know, places, chas shalom to not have it on the floor. More than bread. The matzah is like super holy. That's a, that's a very, very important, that's why matzah, you know, bread you just make. You make the bread and it's, it's ready. Matzah has rules. If you don't say before you make the matzah, areni ose l'shem mitzvat matzah. I'm doing it for the mitzvah of matzah. If you didn't say the person that did it, if you didn't say those words, the matzah is not kosher. You can't use it for Pesach. You have to say areni ose l'shem kedushat matzah for the holiness of the matzah. With your words, you put the energy inside. This matzah is, is not a simple thing. It's a very energetical thing. And that's why we have to eat it seven days. And the more matzah you eat on Pesach, the more you get this healing, the spiritual healing for the whole year. The spiritual power of overcoming the negative forces in you and in the world. Now, um, in, the, in Seder Pesach, we have to know that in general what we're doing in Seder Pesach is basically overcoming that evil, that negative power in the world and in ourself. That's one of the main things in Pesach. That's why we have all those rules. For example, the matzah heals those negative emotions. Why do we break the second matzah? We have three matzot. We have the keara, the plate of Pesach. We have the three matzot, which is symbolize our brain, chokhmah, bina, vedat, right? We, now, the second matzah, we break it to two. So the question we said before, why don't we break the first one? Why don't we break the, the, the last one? Why do we have to break it? The big part, we hide it for afikoman. The small part, we leave it there. What's the reason for that? The Kabbalistic reasons? It says in the holy books that we have three parts of brain and those three parts of brain is three different powers there's the power of kindness the power of judgment and the power of mercy chesed gvura tiferet always the second is going to be judgment in every place the right line in every place is the kindness is the positive the left side everywhere is symbolized the judgment the second matzah symbolizes the judgment. 
What's the whole concept of Passover? To overcome those judgments, those negative power. That's why while we break, the second matzah we break. We don't want to break the first one. That, 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 that's kindness. That's what we need. No, the overcoming the evil inclination symbolized by breaking the second matzah. That's why we have Kohen, Levi, and Israel. Right? Kohen is kindness. Levi is judgment. The Levim are symbolized judgment. That's why, for example, in the desert, Moshe Rabbeinu told that all the Levim has to shave. They shave all the hair with a, with, with a, with a, with a razor. Why did they do that? We, we have even, an, uh, it's not allowed to shave with a razor here. But there, one time they did it. The Kabbalistic reason why? Because the Levi, the tribe of Levi, they have a lot of judgment. And hair is more judgment, symbolized judgment. That's why they needed to shave it completely before they go to serve in the temple, which is, you need a lot of power of kindness there. So that's why everything that is symbolized judgment on Pesach, we break. That's the reason why we have to sit and to lean when we eat the matzah. And it's so important that if you ate the matzah regular, you didn't lean on the left, you didn't fulfill the obligation. Now you have to eat another piece of matzah and to lean. That's the, that's the rule. If you didn't drink the cup of wine when you lean on your left, you didn't fulfill the obligation of drinking the wine, you have to drink another cup of wine. Why it's so important to do it like that? So the simple reason, we all know, because we came out of Egypt, and because we came out of Egypt, we have to feel free. We have to feel that we are kings. We're not slaves anymore. So slaves are sit, they sit like this. But really, if you lean on your right, you didn't fulfill the obligation. If someone eat the matzah when he leans on his right, he has to eat the matzah again on the left side. It's only on the left side. What's the reason? Only the Kabbalah explains what's the reason. Because on the left side of the person, the negative side, it's the negative side, the negative forces, the evil inclination is located there. The whole concept of Pesach is to overcome it for the whole year. That's why we have to lean on the left so we overcome it. We doesn't let it space. We doesn't, doesn't let it come up. We overcome it again and again and again with the matzah, with the, with the wine. But when we eat the maro, which should be bitter, we don't lean. Why? Because the whole concept of maro is we have, even though we overcome the yetzerah, the evil inclination, we have to give it some power. We cannot overcome it at all. We have to give it a little bit. So that's... Um, that's why we have to lean on the left and today also women they have to do that because also women have to overcome it by the way we have this mitzvah also every night every night it says in the holy books that it's good to um, when you go to sleep the best side to go to sleep is on the left side so there's few explanation to this the Rambam which was a big doctor also, was a great rabbi, and also a big doctor, he said that the reason, it's a, it's a health reason, because uh, the stomach is located on the left side, and the liver is on the right side. When you go to sleep on the left, so the liver leans on the stomach, and then the stomach gets warm. When the stomach is warm, it digests better. So that's why it's more healthy to go to sleep on the left side. That's what the Rambam says. Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon. But the Arizal, according to Kabbalah, he says a different reason. Because the negative side is the left side, and the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, is there. And at night, they have more power. We need to overcome them. To not let them um, control us during the night and give us bad dreams or bad thoughts and stuff like that. So we go to sleep on the left side. So therefore we are on them. We don't give them a space. We overcoming them. That's the same concept of overcoming the evil inclination on Pesach. And also you can do it every night. Just every night it's not a must. You don't have to. But on Pesach that's an obligation. Because Pesach is the source for the whole year. You have to do it. So therefore you overcome your Yetzirah, your evil inclination for the whole 
year. I'm sure that there's so many questions that's coming up through this shiur, uh, but Hashem at the end we will give some time to uh, to ask halachic question and also uh, other question, other types of uh, of question. So okay, we are in the leaning part. So we finished with the leaning part. Now we have on Pesach the Haggadah. What's the Haggadah? The Haggadah it's actually the most the, the most important part. The whole concept of Pesach is telling your kids what's happened in Egypt. And why it's so important to tell them what's happened in Egypt. Why it's so important. Some people they say, oh listen, uh, it's happened 3,300 years ago. Okay, we came out of Egypt. Kol HaKavod was very nice, it's a nice history. But okay, what, what it has to do with me right now? It's just in history. Just a remembrance. People doesn't connect to it because it was so long time ago. And the real answer for that question is that really it's happening every day. Yetziat Mitzrayim, going out of Egypt, is happening every day. Everything that is written in Torah, if it was only for one time in the history, they would not write it in the Torah. Torah is forever. Torah is something that is always there. That's why the Torah has to be applied in every generation, every day, every second. What's that mean that we have Yetziat Mitzrayim every day? So briefly, because it's a very long uh, subject, we came out of Egypt. Egypt symbolizes the physical world. Egypt has all desires in it, all the bad desires. Money, uh, women eating, all the other things. The desire to work. We were slaves. Slaves of working. Working hard. Now, Paro, Paro, if we look at the word in Hebrew, and we flip the word, the word is going to be Ha'orif. Ha'orif is the back side of the, of the neck in Hebrew. That's Ha'orif. And Mitzrayim, in Hebrew, Meitzal. Mitzrayim is a narrow place, a thin place. If we look at the body, because everything that happened in the history, we have in our body. If we look at the body, the neck symbolizes Egypt. It's a narrow place. It's a very thin place. If we look at the head, is big. The body is big. This is a Meitzal. This is a narrow place. Now, in Egypt... In the neck, we have the where the food and the water goes, which is symbolized Sarah Mashkim, Sarah Ofim, the minister. There was a story about the minister of of the drink and the minister of food in Egypt that they were talking to to Joseph. All this is right here in our body. And who is the king of the neck of the of Egypt? Is Paro Haoref, the back of the of the of the neck. That's Paro. Now, what this Mitzrayim do? What this Mitzrayim do? This Mitzrayim basically doesn't let our brain, the program, the soul, to affect the body, the heart. The heart basically is the emotions. The emotions, they're going to control what we're going to do. People, if there is a machloket, if there is an argument between the brain and the heart, you know who wins? Always the heart. The heart always wins, unless the brain does such a job to convince the heart. When the heart is convinced, so then the, 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 the heart is going to do with the brain. But always the heart wins. That's how life it is. That's why for people it's very hard to do a diet, for example, or to uh, quit smoking or any other things. They know in the brain smoking is bad. They know eating is not good. They're going to end up in the hospital. They all know this. But the heart says, yeah, but it's tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I want it, it makes me calm, it makes me relax, it makes me... That's the big machloke, that's the big argument of life. Same thing is in the Torah. We know Torah is right. We know we have to fulfill those obligations, the commandments that Hashem says. The heart doesn't want to. So what we do? The reason why it's so hard to, 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 to put that, that information, the mochin, the head, the, the, the program, the soul, and to convince the heart is because we have Egypt. 
Paro doesn't let it go. So the concept of getting out of Egypt, Yetziat Mitzrayim, this is the concept of Am, we are the nation of Israel, are the only nation that came out of Egypt, means we have the superpower to the brain to convince the heart. We can just go through Mitzrayim, we went out of it. And we have that power. And we have to refresh that power every year. Because if we're not going to do this, we're going to be stuck. We're going to know what's good, but we're not going to do it. So every Pesach, we just have to say over and over and over again that story of Egypt. Why? Because by saying that, your soul gets the story, and it's absorbing the soul, and now it gets the power to overcome it, and to teach the heart, and the information goes to the heart. That's why it's so important to say the Haggadah. Some people, they read the Haggadah on Pesach. One, one person reads, everybody listen. That's not good. Everybody has to read. He reads out loud, you read, you whisper it. Because it's, it's super important to say those words. The soul understands, even if you don't understand. The soul, the, let's call it the subconscious mind, understand what's happening and absorb the information and get that energy. So that's why Haggadah is super important. And you know, one of the big rabbis of our generation, he said once that um, all the stories in the world, all the movies, yeah, that there, there is, every story that people make up and they do movies and other things in the Torah, outside of the Torah, they are all only one story. There's only really one story in life, the story of life. What's the story of life? There's good, there is bad, the good fights the bad, and at the end, hopefully, the good wins. That's basically all the stories in the world. There's two powers, bad and good. The good overcome, there's a fight, and then at the end, the good, the good wins. And that's the reason that all the stories are made up from this story, is because that's the story of our life. The story of our life that we have a soul, which is good. And the soul came to this world, which is bad. Has a lot of negativity. And we have to fight it. And at the end, Bezat Hashem, we will win. We will overcome it. We will overcome the evil inclination. That's the story of Pesach. Am Israel and Egypt. The good and the bad. And we overcome it. That's why when you say this story again and again on Pesach, you basically reprogram your mind to understand what's the purpose of life. Your subconscious mind understands it. You refresh that knowledge that your mind has to understand what its purpose. Your soul has to remember the purpose. And it's only through saying that story of Yetziat Mitzrayim, of going out of Egypt. Not just, just for yourself, for your kids. Why? Because your kids came from your brain. What's a seed? Those kids that came out of me, they came from my brain. They are basically the continuation of my brain. You know what's zera? A seed in Hebrew called zera. What's zera? Zera. What's zera? This is bad. The bad, the negative things that I didn't overcome come into my kids. That comes into them. And that's why people get mad on their kids. Why? Because they see the bad things of them in them, in the kids. And they, they, they can't see it. Because it's like me. <laughs> and that's the real reason why you have to tell your kids because they are the part of your brain. They are the part of your brain and you have to tell them the story, the mission. And reprogram that. And hopefully they know what to do. And that's why a kid can make his father go to the world to come, to Olam Abba. Why? Because the kid is a part of your soul. He can fix you. But we're not going to depend on them, right? We have to fix ourselves. You don't know what your kid's going to do. You have to, you have to do it yourself. But basically, that's what happens. If they are part of your brain. That's what you have to tell them all the time. You tell them again and again and again the whole story of Egypt. 
and to explain it, not just to say the words, explain it. You know, this, this, um, this night we have to explain everyone, we have to take our time. It's not just come, eat, drink, and go home. That's not, that's not, that's maybe other holidays you can do that. Not on Pesach. Pesach is super important as we explained a little bit today. So, okay, there's so many things I wanted to talk about. I see that I don't have a lot of time. So just a few things practical that we can do on Pesach. Um... Yeah, so we said that on on Pesach, one of the big rabbis of Hasidut, he says that all the wars that is going to happen in the world and all the wars that are going to happen in your life are decided on Pesach. When? At midnight. On midnight on Pesach, Hashem decides the wars that's going on, that's going to be going on the whole year. In your life, and in the world. That's why Pesach is so important to pray, to learn, to read Shira Shirim on Pesach. At the end of the Agada, we have Shira Shirim. To uh, pray to Akadosh Baruch Hu, to make our year the most spiritual and to not have arguments, to not have machlokot. We have to pray on that on Pesach. On Pesach is a day that we tell miracles. We tell miracles of Hashem. Rabbi Chaim Palaji brings down that when you say a miracle to Hashem, when you say a miracle that Hashem did to you, what happens is Hashem pays you with another miracle. So if He did, if he did a miracle to you, and you go and you spread the word, you say, you know, I had this and that happening. See how the power of Hashem in the world and you spread the word of, of that miracle, the reward for that is another miracle. So on Pesach, says Rabbi Chaim Palaji, after we say the miracles that happened to our fathers in Egypt, that's a good stage for each one of us to tell. We have a whole night, right? To tell those miracles, small miracles. And I'm telling you, I have a, a book booklet in my house right here. Yeah, that in this booklet I write those miracles that happening to me. Th those small things, you know, that one time I was praying for something and right away it came. Or something that I did and, 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 and I had a miracle. I write it down on Pesach. You open this booklet, you tell your kids, you tell everyone. And Hashem will pay you that the next year that's going after Pesach, you will have more miracles because you just said it. That's one thing, that's one present that we get from Rabbi Chaim Palaji. Another thing. Uh, Pesach is a time of, we said it's more spiritual time, but it's also a time of parnasa, of uh, income. Not our income, but the global income. It says in the Gemara that uh, Pesach nidonim ala tvua. the world is judged on the economy. When? On the night of Pesach. That's why I think now we're in a super you know, time that we need this. <laughs> We need this mercy from Hashem because the world is going through crisis. And this is going to be decided. What's going to be? Yeah? With the income. How much uh, Trudeau or Donald Trump or Bibi Netanyahu will give money to the people that doesn't work? It's depend at the end of the day on that Pesach. How much the world is going to Chaz Shalom suffer from that crisis? It's depend on Pesach. And Pesach, we have in Kabbalah, we have three names, and there's 72 names of, of God. And there's three names from those 72 names, that those names are the names of Parnassah, of income, that brings wealth. What are those names? So th we spoke about that once, I think. Uh, one of those names is Pei, Aleph, and Yud. So if you are making meditation on this, on this name, it actually comes from the Pasuk, Poteach et Yadecha. The first letter of Poteach et Yadecha is Pei, Aleph, Yud. This name, if you have it in mind, it will bring you wealth. Yeah, let's say you're in a business appointment, have this in mind, you will bring wealth to yourself. Another name is called Samech Aleph Lamed. And another name, the third name is Chet Tav Chaf. Yeah, if you take the Pasuk of Poteach Et Yadecha, 
The last letter of every word is Chet Taf Chaf Cha Tach. Chet Taf Chaf. So we have Pei Aleph Yud, Samech Aleph Lamed, and Chet Taf Chaf. Those are the three names, the only three names of income of Parnasa that brings wealth. Look how interesting is it. If you take the first letter of every one of them, it's going to be Pesach. Pei Aleph Yud, Samech Aleph Lamed, Chet Taf Chaf. Because Pesach, it's the day of Parnasa, of wealth. That's why also very important to pray to Hashem at that night. Especially at midnight, if you have time, pray for your income. Pray, pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu to give wealth to the world, first of all. To everyone. And also to your family, Bezat Hashem, uh, uh, be wealthy. Another thing, before we go to questions... Um, yeah, the Netivot Shalom, one of the big Admorim says, Netivot Shalom, he says something very interesting. One second, let me find it. Yeah, he says that on Pesach, because we get a reprogram of our soul, that's the best time to change the, the luck of the person. Each one has a luck. Yeah, there's lucky people, there's less lucky people. He says, because now you get the neshama. The neshama has your luck, has your potential. You get a new one. Now you can change your life 180 degrees. From ra'a le tova, From bad to good. At that night. And this is according to the vessel you do. The vessel, how you create the vessel? By doing all the procedure of Pesach properly. Do all the rules. Learn about them. And be careful from chametz as much as you can. Buy only things that you're sure for sure that there's no chametz in it. Why? Because the Arizal say, if a person is careful to not have even a crumb of chametz on Pesach in his mouth, he is, um, uh, all the year is going to be safe from sinning. And by the way, the reason that we see that we are sinning during the year, yeah, and when he says sin, means accidentally. Sin, chet. There's chet, avon, and pesha. There's a few levels. Sin means accidentally. When you light the, turn on the light on Shabbat accidentally, that means you didn't fulfill Pesach. You had chametz in Pesach a little bit. Because if you would not have chametz at all, you would not sin during the year. That's what the Arizal says. That's why our rabbis were very, very careful in Pesach, what to eat, what to do, and especially that night, to do all the procedure. Baruch Hashem, we live outside of Israel, not Baruch Hashem, but in, in one thing, it's we have something positive. We have two nights of Pesach. So if in the first night you didn't do your best, you have the second night. Now, now it's the most important message. Something that is completely prohibited. The, mo the worst thing you can do on Pesach is to be angry. Worst thing, because if someone is angry on Pesach, you mess up everything. It's the, the, the highest power of judgment is angriness. And that's why it doesn't matter. And by the way, all this lecture can make you really, really angry on Pesach. Why? Because you know what's so important. You're going to be careful in everything. If someone is going to mess something up, you're going to get angry at him. So uh, you, we have to be careful. Even if things are not going my way. Even if, I don't know, the matzah break, the, 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 the wine spill, spill on the floor, and whatever happening, doesn't matter. We have to stay calm. And there was a big Admo, big, big rabbi, that he, his wife was a little bit, um, she had a mental issues. And she, she had mental issues. And uh, all the kids already got married. He had only one kid that is, was at home still. And on Pesach, that kid did something. On Leila Seder, that, when they're sitting on the table, and this rabbi was Admor, he was doing all the kavanot and intentions for him. Pesach was a big, big, big deal. He was preparing himself two months before Pesach for Pesach. And at that day, his kid did something, and his wife, because she had mental issues, she got crazy. And she took all the food and all the matzot and just took everything out of the table and all mess, and she messed up everything. This Admo, this big rabbi, at that moment, just started to dance and to sing. That's what I did. 
Now nobody understood what you're doing. Like you have to get mad right now. Everything is there's no Pesach. He says no. Doesn't matter what. The most important thing is to stay, uh, stay calm, stay relaxed. And if I can tell you a, a last story, and we'll end with this. It says about Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Mibarbitchev, one of the big Hasidim. He, one time, he had a Pesach Seder, he had a Passover night with his students and family. And in the middle of that night, he was, he had a Ruha Kodesh, he could speak to angels to, to see things. So they came up to him like a prophecy. And from heaven they told him, what do you think that your Seder Pesach is the best Seder Pesach? That's what you think? There's someone in your neighborhood that has a higher level than you of Pesach night. So he was so interested, he says, who is this guy? So they show him where he lives. So he stopped everything. He told all the students, now we go to this place. And they went, they knock on the door, and they see a simple man. He's not a rabbi, not nothing, just a regular person. And the rabbi, the big rabbi of the city, is knocking on his door. And he says, how are you? How is your seder? I came to see you, to visit you. So he was like shocked, what are you doing here? So he asked him, the rabbi, how was the seder? How was the thing going? So this person, he says, rabbi, you came here to embarrass me in front of all of your students. Please don't do that. So he says, no, no, I really want to know, how was your seder? So he told them that, um, that the rabbi, he went to a lecture before, a few days before, and the rabbi said that they have to um, make sure that they finish the old wine before Pesach, and they use a new wine for Pesach. Because the old wine is not good, it's not a kavod, it's not a respect to use that on Pesach. Maybe has also chametz in it. So he said, I forgot about that. And right before Pesach, I had more wine that I didn't finish. Now, I don't want just to, sp to spill the wine and to throw it away. It's, 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 it's expensive wine. So I, I said, okay, it's baltashchit. It's, it's not allowed to, to do that with food. So I drank it. But it was a whole bottle of wine. And I got so drunk before Pesach. On Pesach Seder, I was completely drunk. I came to do the Kiddush, and I didn't remember nothing. And then I just said to everyone uh, that I'm drunk, but we have to do Seder Pesach. So I, I even didn't say the Agadah. I was doing the Kiddush, and I said, Guys, you know, this day God took us out of Egypt. Let's make him a Lachaim. Thank him for taking us out of Egypt. L'chaim to God, thank you God, thank you very much. <laughs> and then they drink. And then he said, and then I took the other cup of wine, and I said, listen, we done not just took us out of Egypt, we had matzot, and he brought us in the desert, and we had all this uh, time in the desert, we had the man, and other stuff, and we came to Eretz Israel. let's give him another L'chaim, and drink for God. And he says, after a few drinks, I just... I just uh, uh, fell on the floor and I couldn't, I couldn't do more of, of, of this seder. So Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Mibarditchev was shocked. This guy, his seder Pesach is higher than mine? And the real answer is yes. Because whatever he did was from pure heart. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to do things from pure heart. Even if all the details doesn't go your way. You have to try. But if it doesn't go your way, if you have a pure heart, HaKadosh Baruch Hu accept that. That's the highest level of Seder Pesach. I want to bless all of you. Bezat Hashem. Hashem will give us the Geula, the, the, the Mashiach to come on that time. Because it says in Nisan we have, it's a time for Mashiach. It's a time for Geula, for redemption from our problems, for the world's problems. Bezat Hashem. Yirat so that Hashem will fulfill all our wishes and give us the best night of Seder this year. Amen ve Amen. Thank you.